we are live now sir okay dr pikane sir please dr pikane sir no ah uh, good evening all am i audible sir yes sir ah uh, yes sir audible okay so at the outset on behalf of uh, veterinary internal and preventive medicine society i thank uh, uh, luhas isar for hosting uh, webinar organized by vipm uh today we have with us a renowned scientist in the area of uh, small ruminant medicine and a uh, very dynamic general secretary of our society dr ashok kumar sir dr ashok kumar sir is the principal scientist in veterinary medicine at icr central uh, institute for research on goats at magdum dr ashok kumar he did his graduation as well as his doctoral degree from the college of veterinary science mathura he has 30 years of experience in teaching and research in the field of veterinary medicine he has his expertise particularly in the area of small ruminant medicine that being the disease control he has published 125 research papers in national and international journals of repute he has uh, two patents to his credit he has guided uh, more than 25 pg and 12 PG phd students based on your, uh, his vast experience in the field of small ruminant medicine he has also written a very good book on a goat production for his uh, work he has been uh, awarded with the fellowship by two different societies so friends today we have with us uh, uh, a renowned uh, you see the scientist in the field of small ruminant medicine who is going to deliver a webinar on therapeutic management of common health problems in goats with a special reference to kid mortality vipm is uh, organizing web webinars on different topics for the last two months we have organized already organized two webinars for the academicians and field veterinarians we have also organized two webinars for the farmers and this is the fifth webinar which is being organized today by the luhas uh i also thank uh, dr nilesh for taking lead in uh, organizing uh, this particular webinar so i request now our today's uh, speaker dr ashok kumar sir to deliver his webinar and uh, we listen to him for the next one hour thank you over to ashok kumar sir
डॉक्टर अशोक कुमार सर ओके सो शुड आई क्लिक दिस एंटायर स्क्रीन और ए विंडो टू प्रेजेंट एंटायर स्क्रीन सर एंटायर स्क्रीन राइट देन शेयर इट इट इज नॉट एक्टिव एक्चुअली सर फर्स्ट स्टार्ट द प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन ऑन योर डेस्कटॉप ओके 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 देन इट विल बी शॉन सर now it is visible no sir what i am clicking the uh, share your entire screen the yes, share sir. button share button is not active sir have you opened the powerpoint presentation sir yes it is open uh, uh, when you uh, click the present now button in down side okay okay is present now uh, yes it is clicked now i able to see your entire screen in window entire screen sir yes then share should be active actually share is not active share button should be active only click and the cancel button is active someone else is presenting sir that's why there is a problem sayed arif uh, now now again again try okay sir. i am okay, trying for that so the problem share button should be active actually presenting so and uh, now so now it is clear yes sir it gets its presenting presentable okay so thank you uh, dr ayu bikane the president vipm before starting i would like to express my sincere thanks to the vipm executives and the competent authority of lua sisar and especially dr nilesh sidhu for making the arrangement for the presentation in national seminar on therapeutic management of common health problem in court with specific reference to kid mortality in this presentation we will see the trend in goat production in india we will also see the risk factor in kid mortality and its management and prevention and management of growing kid and adult goat diseases and some of the experiences gained in the cirg on disease management will also be part of this presentation the total slide will be 40 and i will speak for 60 minutes The goat husbandry in India is mostly in the hand of small farmers. They are rearing the goats in the small flocks, five goats, ten goats, hundred goats, and they are rearing the goats. Besides their main occupation, it may be agriculture, it may be some other else. But in the last decades, we are seeing a change in the trend of goat husbandry. Some of the private players, some of the youngsters, some of the educated person are coming up. for goat husbandry and taking this goat husbandry as industrialization or the most organized manner so if you can see the 
this is extensive system of the management and some of the farmers are using the technology that is under the semi intensive system of the management they are gaining more efforts but now some of the farmers are coming up with the more advanced technology using the modern technology especially some sensor technology and they are taking the goat husbandry as in the format of poultry farming in our institute we are organizing a training program six time in a year there is a very extensive demand by the farmers or especially the young farmers some graduates undergraduates and professionals here you can see the farmers most of the farmers coming for the training program at cirg they are graduate more than great more than 60 percent are graduates it means now this industry is shifting to the more educated persons so they are using the most modern technology for the goat farming in age wise we can see the most of the farmers or most of the trainees or 70 percent training they belong to the 30 40 years of age group it means young enthusiastic farmers are coming up for the goat farming in the most modernized way in India, there are 34 characterized breeds. Besides the characterized breeds, still there are 40 breeds which is uncharacterized. And all these breeds are distributed in the all parts of the country. They are rearing in the different agroclimatic conditions. They are rear in the dry arid areas, coastal areas, Himalayan areas. Means these goat is a species which is acclimatized to the all type of the climatic condition. They are reared for meat production, milk production, fiber production, and skin production. There are the different type of the breeds. Some of our milk type, meat type, some are dual type, and some are fiber types. So depending upon the choice of a farmers, they are coming up with the specialized goat farming practices. Goat has been taken as a future animal because the goat farming can be done by the small investment the farmers can start their business with the five goats and ten goats the house requirements are not too much they can be even kept without house when you are rearing the more number of animal you need more i mean to say the uh, more uh, organized housing system small animals highly prolific some of the goats are giving the birth of uh, two to three kids and they can survive on a very sparse vegetation means where the other animal cannot survive goat can survive on a, any class any type of the vegetation and the goat is taken as a very good converter of the poor refuses they can produce the best quality meat good quality milk production and this species having a special adaptability in the all type of the climatic conditions that's why this is considered as a future animal because now coming times the climate change is one of the one of the factors that will impact the animal production. And this species is more acclimatized to the different type of the harsh climate. It may be low temperature, high temperature. So this animal has been taken as a future animal. The meat of this animal is low in cholesterol. That's why it is considered as good for health. And the most of the animal being reared by the farmers which under the extensive system of the management, they are of organic types rarely they are giving the chemical or any antibiotics or enthalmentic to the animal so the organic meat is being produced by the local farmers the goat milk is another commodity which is now attracting the farmers goat milk is having evidence scientific evidence and well established fact that it contain the several factors which having medicinal value and the therapeutic value it contain the cla it contain the various type of the bioactive peptides they are active against antimicrobials that's why this goat milk is also taken as against has been used against the antiviral condition in human beings in a one point of time where there is a viral infection the demand of the goat is being increased because of the region and the region are scientifically validated the milk of the goat having small fat size that's why it can easily be digested by the human being so it's very good for youngsters young ones and the old person and when the person or the human being suffer from the allergy milk allergy after taking the cow milk in buffalo milk 
goat milk is the best option to alleviate the allergy. This figure shows the contribution of the goat in India. The goat is the second largest livestock species, that is 28% of the cattle. The population is increasing by 10% over 2012. Now it has been 148.88 million in 2019 in the latest livestock census. Now our country ranks first in the goat milk production and second in the goat, production, goat population and goat meat production. Goat sector contributes 38,500 crores, that is 9.2% of total value of output from livestock sector at current price. This goat husbandry sector contributes 5.63 million tons of milk, 1.08 million tons of goat meat, and 7.8 million tons of goat meat. So, one of the most important factors you can see the meat of the goat is of costliest meat. Somewhere it is 450 per kg, and somewhere it is 500, more than 500 per kg of this cost. So the goat contribute, contribute enormous and also providing a large number of population sustainability and livelihood to the farmers and also to the younger farmers to become the more millennial. Here you can see why the disease management is more important. We have made an analysis, the extent analysis on the base of the 2011 goat population. Sorry to interrupt you, sir, in between. Okay. Uh, please click on hide uh, in the downside one button is there stop sharing and hide please click on hide so that it will go yes sir. thank you sir now it's clear so uh, we made a extent analysis that is cost benefit analysis of different intervention in any animal husbandry it may be a goat husbandry sheep husbandry or any type of husbandry we have a different interventions to improve the production breeding intervention disease management management intervention, nutrition intervention, and marketing. Marketing is one of the most important in the present time. Here in the figures, you can see that is millions in rupees. The gross gain due to breeding intervention, disease management intervention, nutrition intervention, and marketing intervention at a commercial age. Commercial age means you are selling the animal at the age of 9 months to 12 months of age. This is the ideal is where the maximum profit is gained by the farmers. In the cost of intervention, if you will see, the least intervention cost is from disease management. In net gain, it is highest, that is 30%. In comparison to other intervention, if you see the breeding intervention, it is 24%. Nutrition intervention, it is again 24%. And marketing, it is 20%. So in disease intervention, you are your input is less and you are gaining more. So the cost benefit ratio is 3.56 in comparison to the other intervention. So my, my contention is that the disease management is of top priority in any animal uh, farming. Now we are talking in reference to the goat production. If you see the overall uh, benefit cost ratio in the goat farming is comes to the 1.95. Means you are investing 1 rupees, you are getting 1.95. Now we come to the common diseases. There are certain diseases which is common on young animal, juvenile animal, zero to one month of age. Some of the diseases are very important in the young kids from one month to three month of age group. And some of the disease become very important in the growing kids from three to six month of age. And the, some of the diseases are very common adult animals. We will see age wise what are the common diseases and how they express in the extensive system of the management and intensive system of the management. As you know, when you are shifting to the more organized system, the disease also become organized. The manifestation become little varied. Acuteness and the incidence is little varied. Now we will see the important diseases in the different age group. Now we come to the diseases which are very commonest from the day born up to three month of age group. So we are focusing mainly on kid mortality. Kid mortality means we are accounting the age from zero to three month of age. The kid mortality is important. It's a very vital and critical because 
when the farmers lost the kid, it is lost the future of the goat farming. The several reports being observed, the kid mortality ranging from 20 to 25 percent in the different studies. It means we are almost losing the animals 10 to 12 million kids per year. It means the farmers are having a heavy economic losses because of the kid mortality. To exactly quantify the kid mortality in our country, we have run a project, an All India Network project on neonatal mortality. We made a survey on the different part of the country and we distributed the data on the different climatic condition, tropical, tropical wet and dry, humid subtropical, semi-arid, arid and tropical wets. Everywhere we'll find the kid mortality ranging from 15 to 25 percent. The overall mortality is 21.88 percent. So it means the farmers are in great loss. We also quantified the economic losses on the basis of our survey in, in India wide. We find that the economic losses to the tune of 14,589 per household due to kid mortality. So how we can prevent, prevent this kid mortality is a very important issue for the goat farmers. This slide shows the different set of the rearing of goat farming. We made a survey on the farmer's flock where the goat kid mortality was 21.8%. Some of the farmers which is obtained the training program from the CIRG or some other universities, they are started the farm, means they are using some scientific knowledge, using the technology for the goat production, the mortality declined to 16.99%. We also running a All India Coordinated Research Project on Goat Improvement. We have 21 centers India-wide. And these centers are adopting the different farms and they are providing the technical inputs. They are also providing inputs in terms of vaccination, deworming, ectoparasite spray. So because of the technology, the goat farming, this uh, the kid mortality is also come down to 11.15. And this is CIRG goat unit where the mortality is just 5%. So you can say the management system or the scientific intervention is very important in control of kid mortality. When we survey India whites, we also survey what are the important diseases which is playing the important role. And these are the major risk factors associated with the kid mortality. We find this diarrhea and pneumonia. These are the two important clinical conditions or diseases which is accounted for the largest mortality. The kid mortality really is a cause of concern. There are the different regions of the kid mortality. There are the Broadly, there are the two types of the kid mortality. One is the infectious in nature, and another is the non-infectious in nature. In most of the time, we are worried about the infectious causes of the kid mortality. But we skip and forget the non-infectious causes. These are also very important. In the infectious causes, the diarrhea is one of the important killer of the young kids. In the diarrhea, there are the different organisms associated majorly dominated by E. coli, besides its other bacteria like Salmonella, Clostridium, Campylobacters, and other viruses like Cruperiotovirus, Coronavirus, Cryptosporidium, Imeria, Coxidia, they are the importance. FMD, although it is a disease of adult animals, but when it occurs in the younger animal, it having the heavy losses to the kids. The pneumonia is the next one that is associated with the different bacteria certain viruses, specific viruses, non-specific viruses, and besides this, certain other diseases like thyme and tetanus is also contribute to the kid mortality. But the most important part is non-infectious in nature, which also become a part of kid mortality and also play an important role as a predisposing factor. Hypothermia with or without starvation, joint ill, poor shelter management, poor standard of hygiene and deficiency diseases. In out of this all, we will discuss some of the very important that play an important role in the kid mortality. Now we come to the diarrhea complex. Diarrhea is a complex, means number of organisms are associated and they are responsible for the diarrhea. 
In our study, we are also run a project on the neonatal diarrhea. We find that E. coli is the most dominant one. Clostridium perfringens, although this organism is causing a acute mortality in growing kids from three to six months in adult animal, but we also noticed that Clostridium perfringens in very young age means up to the one month of time is also an important organism. Besides the two viruses, rotavirus, especially the group A virus, and bovine coronavirus, these are also associated. Cryptosporidium, this is uh, also, sometimes it may cause the disease as a single organism, and sometimes the group of organism is associated with the infection. Salmonella species, not a very common isolate in the course, otherwise the salmonella is in one of the important organisms causing the diarrhea in the sheep. So whatever the reason is, when we surveyed, when we go for the analysis of the fecal sample, we find that the 90% of the samples, they are having the Ischia coli. So the coli bacillosis is the most important infection. Other infections like rotavirus and coronavirus and cryptosporidia, they are responsible for breaking the mucosal immunity of the intestine. And because of this situation, the E. coli dominate and start liberating the toxin. Colibacillosis caused by the E. coli is an environmental pathogen and oral infection is important. Either the young animal is gaining, gaining the infection through the contaminated water or during suckling. If the udder is not clean, the animal is sucking E. coli first, then the milk. So E. coli of different uh, serotypes, different pathotypes, dominated by EPC, ETC and STX. If you see the clinical manifestation of colibacillosis, it is in two, two forms, diarrhea and septicemia. Diarrhea, where the animal having the yellowish and greenish and whitish diarrhea, leading to the dehydration and mortality. In septicemic form, sometimes confused, in septicemic form is, form is not necessarily they suffer from diarrhea, but the under the septicemia, animal become feverish, not able to stand up, not able to suckle the dam, and there is sudden death. The death percentage is very high in septicemia in comparison to diarrhea. Sometimes you will find the diarrhea and septicemia combinedly occur. So this colibacillosis mostly occur from the day first to the 30 days of the kid. Sometimes it's per acute case, sometimes acute case. And because of the starvation and because of the increasing dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, the death of the animal is occurring. Now we have a different approaches to control the diarrhea. In first instance, veterinarians start with the antibacterial therapy. As you know, the E. coli, his organism is gaining the resistance very fast, especially when the animal is being maintained in the organized system, where you are continuously using the antibiotics or different class of antibiotics, sometimes penicillin, Abanoglycosides, cephalexine, cephalosporin group of compound, quinolone compounds. So the fast gaining resistance. Sometimes the veterinarians become frustrated from the treatment of colibacillosis in organized system. We are mapping the antibacterials. I want to say the resistance since last ten years. So we find that still there are some antibiotics which are sensitive. It is very surprising to me that gentamicin, it belongs to the aminoglycosides, is still find sensitive in comparison to other group of antibiotics. So we that the, there are the different antibiotics that's commonly used by the veterinarians. It may be a gentamicin, cephalosporin, endofloxacin. Generally, endofloxacin we are avoiding because this endofloxacin is not recommended for the younger kids because of their own disadvantages. But Whenever it is a sensitive medicine, you can use for a very short period of time to save the life of an animal. And the judicious use of the hydration therapy, electrolyte therapy is one of them. For the vaccine, for the control of E. coli, there is no vaccine is available. We have attempted a killed bacterium. It is a very common practice in the organized system means we isolate the different isotypes, different the types of the E. coli, different pathotype of E. coli, and the most prevalent type of the E. coli is being 
used as a killed bacterium. It is a diamond vaccine. And this diamond vaccine really works. It improves, it increases the immunoglobulin concentration, specific immunoglobulin concentration through the colostrum and the young kids gain the immunity against the E. coli. But again, it is a farm specific vaccine. You can use as a generalized vaccine. The major cause or the major root of infection is oral root of infection. If the farmers are preventing the oral infection, they will win the race. Means you have to provide the clean water and the clean milk. The clean water means you have to make a all arrangement in the organized system or anywhere to provide the disinfected water. We have a two very different uh, common option is KMN4 producing permanganates at the rate of 0.2% to 2.5 mg, 10 mg per liter of water. It's the best option because it is easily available to the farmers. But the it having delay in action when there is a more organic matter in the contaminated water, the disinfection still takes long time. It may be one hour to 24 hours. Other approaches are calcium hypochlorites, bleaching powder. That can be a, another option. Chlorine tablet is a, another option. It means we have to provide a clean water. You have to change the water two or three times in a day. You can prevent the contaminate, contamination to the young kids. And second option, second route is through the milk. Means you have to utter the wash. We are washing the udders. Plain water is also good. If you are using the antiseptic mixed water to clean the udder, then you allow the suckling that you can preventing the oral infection. It is the important key to prevent the diarrhea in an animal. Now we come to the second important disease, that is the pneumonia. Although when you will go for the morbidities of uh, the Kid, uh, the kid diseases, you will not find not much more cases of the pneumonia. But when you go for a post-mortem, the most of the animal are suffering from the pneumonia. Because pneumonia, uh, the lungs is harboring the lot of infection. And because of uh, the breaching the immunity in the lungs, these uh, in regularly inhabiting bacteria in the lungs, they start proliferating and causing the infection. We have been seeing that it is an environmentally stressed disease. It is a, whenever the animal face the stress, the pneumonia start precipitating. Here you can see the incidence of the pneumonia is high at two different time of the year. In the April and May, when the temperatures start increasing, and the December and January, the temperatures start declining. It means the climatic conditions are playing a predisposing role in causing of a pneumonia. Second is the weaning stress. Weaning stress means the young animal is weaned at the three month of age from the mother, means it is not allowed to suckling the milk and then it will allow for the different ration or different green fodders. So this weaning stress is also putting a stress over the body and the young kids also suffer from the pneumonia. Interestingly, in kids, the generally the pneumonia occurs in the winter season. But in case of kid, in, in the goat kids, the pneumonia also occurs in summer season. There are the different etiological region for the pneumonia. It may be bacterial, it may be mycoplasma, and manifested by the common symptoms like the rise of the temperature, evidence of the bronchopneumonia, dyspnea. And if you are rightly approaching for the treatment, the animal may survive. But the selection of the antibiotic is always very important in pneumonia. Because you do not know the what type of the organism is playing an important role. It may be bacteria alone, it may be mycoplasma alone. Because if the infection is caused by the mycoplasma, there are only two or three antibiotics which are effective against the mycoplasma, like tetracycline, tiamatine, and androfloxacin. So you have to you make a judicious use of antibiotic, preferably the broader spectrum antibiotics, to treat the pneumonia. Besides this, as you know, it is an environmentally stressed condition. You have to make up the whole arrangement in the farms to avoid the climatic stress. It may be the heat stress or the cold stress that will protect the animal from the stress and animal will be healthy. Otherwise, you will see the, these are the post-mortem lesions, bronchopneumonia and fibrous pneumonia 
and you will be in a trouble or the farmers may feel rather dejected. If the oral infection is one of them, another window for the infection of the younger kid is the navel. If the navel is, uh, this navel cord is automatically off after the one and two week after, but whenever there is a damage to the navel, it will also open the window for the infection. And from this infection is gained to the entry to the system, it is causing the navel infection that is called omphalitis. It may be sepsis. And this infection is traveled to the different, uh, they are causing the navel ill, means it causing the local infection. The infection is traveled to the joints, this is called the joint ill. Here you can see the young animals showing the enlarged joints. The infection is also extended to the liver, causing the hepatitis. Infection is also transported to the pneumonia, and it may be the death. So the very simplest region, only there is a little damage to the navel and you are uh, allowing the infection to the insides. So if the farmers, if the farmers are applying just a tincture iodine or a covid iodine after the birth of a kidding or in case of any damage that will create the antisepsic at the around the navel and the infection is can be blocked or prevented otherwise uh, you can see here the case of the tetanus is also this virus this bacteria clostridium tetanus also get the entrance from the damaged navel so the key points for the farmers or the veterinarians to prevent the infection, oral infection, the infection gateway from the navel. The FMD, foot and mouth disease. This infection is not very acute infection in the adult animals. In adult animal, you will not find much acute clinical sign in comparison to the cattle and buffalo. But if the FMD, in younger kids, I mean to say, if the adult animal is not being vaccinated and the young animal is born without the vaccinated or the unvaccinated dam, there's an opportunity, there is a chance that young animal may suffer from the foot and mouth disease. As you know, there are the 22 important diseases in the kid mortality are the diarrhea and pneumonia. You will see in FMD, this sudden death in the young kids. In the evening, you have a hundred animal. In the morning, you will find all are dead. They are not showing the, any clinical sign of diarrhea and pneumonia. The sudden death without showing any more clinical sign always arises the suspicion of the FMD. You immediately open a carcass and you will examine the heart. You will find the line of necrosis. And this typical uh, pathological condition is termed as tigered heart. So the vaccination of the adult animal or the dam is ultra important to save the life of the young kids from the FMD. The ichthyma, it's also known as ORF, it is a viral disease, is not a very economically important disease. If it is being neglected, it becomes a highly economic disease. The, this is a viral disease, is an epitheliotropic virus, and is highly morbid disease, means if there is an infection, and all animals will suffer, especially young animals. Adult animals also suffer with this contagious thyma, but young animals especially having the high morbidities, resulting into a pustular lesion, scabby lesion on the face or some other part of the body. It's very severe in goats than the sheep. So the major, the major thing is that initially when there is a one or two scabs, you start applying the antiseptics or the concentrated KMNF4, 5% that will eliminate this scabs and then you apply the antiseptic cream. If there is a more contaminated or pustular form, you can use for the antibiotics. But the important things, when there is a scabby condition or on the face, you are then in the scabs is being removed. The scab should not be left on the ground because they are full of virus. It is a better approach to collect these scabs, either buried or burn these scabs. Otherwise, the infection becomes endemic and year-wise, especially in the winter season, a lot of cases of ichthyma will come. Although mortality is not very high, but if they're being neglected, animal become unable to suckle the dam in anison, 
and the animal may die with other concurrent infection because of the poor immunity. There is no vaccine in India, but this disease also considered as a very economic important disease in the other part of uh, the or other countries. There are the vaccines available. The vaccines are combined with the pox available in international markets. And we are also thinking that the vaccine development for contagious thyma to save the life of the animal. This is another condition which is most of time neglected. When the animal become two, two to three months of age, mostly the incidence of tapeworm recorded. The tapeworm infection coming from the adult animal. And if the younger animal, especially two months of age, is not showing the proper growth, you must examine for the tapeworm. This tapeworm infestation is called by the Monogia expensa, Avit lini species. A younger animals are more suffer. Although the uh, tapeworm infestation is in the adult animal, but they are not clinical sign. This is of young animal oriented disease. Animal become weak in addition, not showing proper growth, but sometimes the mortality is also because of this table. Reason is that in the loop of the intestine, this because of the large amount of the this uh, gravid segment of the table, there is loop of inarobiasis in created, and loop of inarobiasis is very suitable for the growth of the clostridium infection. And clostridium, you know, it is a inhabitant of the intestine. So the clostridium infection start proliferating, liberating the toxin and the animal died. So the monogia expensa is an, is an important need to a consideration in the farming system. There are specific enthelmatics for the treatment of tapeworm. The most common use are niclosomide. It is a very safe medicine because it is not entirely absorbed from the intestine, completely available in the intestine to kill the parasite. But the availability of the niclosomides is not very, not very common. Prezequental is one of the options very commonly used at the dose rate of 5 mg per kg body weights. Phenomenazole is also one of the good options. But phenomenazole needs a reputation. You have to provide this phenomenazole daily for three days. The, the complete removal or the cure from the table is, is a very difficult task. You need a repeated dose of the antibiotics. We have standardized a protocol, means any enthalmatic we give daily for three days, then we repeat after three weeks. So the two successive treatment at the interval of three weeks, then we able to eliminate the parasites. Here you can see the large in, uh, tape worm in the intestine. Treating the clinically infected kids and adult goats. Because if you are removing the infection from the adult goats, you are preventing the infection going to the kid. See, another condition which is generally skipped is floppy kid syndrome. Floppy kid syndrome, animal is, is not able to stand up, not able to suck up, sucking the milk. An animal is no other diseases like diarrhea and respiratory diseases, an animal may die. The reason is not very clear, but it is confused. It is very confusing with certain other diseases, like some septicemic form of the cholivacillosis, enterotoxemia, abomagal bloat. In such a case, if you are using the a pinch of soda by car, it's, it survived the animal, means Biochemically, the floppy kid syndrome is a metabolic acidosis. You have to counter the metabolic acidosis. So this one teaspoon of baking soda mixed with the half teaspoon of salt and two cup of water and used orally. Or simply you can use the, uh, this uh, soda by car. The animal will survive. It is a, sometimes looks like a magic treatment. If you see the overall situation, that the how you can control the kid mortality, the dam vaccination is, is an important. Although there is no vaccine available in our country, 
the international market you can see a vaccine having the rotavirus coronavirus clostridium perfringens type c d e coli that can be used as a time of vaccination definitely the smart management colostrum timely sanitation measures improve the passive immunity passive immunity by the vaccination or by the other means by providing the mineral supplementation especially the copper and zinc playing a very important role that improve the immunity in the dams and then immunity is passes to the younger animal and protect the animal from the young age infection probiotics herbal immunomodulatory is also playing important role when you are using the herbal immunomodulation before one month of the parturition it also works we have lot of work on the herbal immunomodulatory protecting the animal from the infection we also develop a drug that is iv4 that is being commercialized in the markets innate immunity of the young kids can also be improved by using the probiotics we have been using the men and oligosaccharides in probiotics are the life lives the life source of the the is uh, the bacteria now we come to the 3 to 6 month of age group in 3 to 6 month of age group coccidia is really a menace in the intensive system of the farm lot of uh, farmers being frustrated when the young animal is not gaining weight it is a cardinal sign when the young animal especially 3 to 6 month of age is not gaining the body weight it always giving a suspicion of coccidia it is a protozoan disease caused by the armeria mostly it is affecting the 2 to 6 month of age the infection in coming from the adult animal adult animal after the 6 month of time is gaining the resistance and not showing the clinical sign in acute case the diarrhea abdominal pain and anemia but chronic case is major showing the stunted growth weaning stress overcrowding are the predisposing factor if you see the post mortem if you see the intestine you will find the coccidial cyst in the coccidial cyst it covers the large surface of the intestine and the animal become weak because of poor malabsorption of the nutrients in the management there are the four important tips avoid overcrowding you can do the experiment in the organized farm overcrowding you will find the number of cases of the coccidia younger stock should not be kept with the adults because the infection coming from the adults ensuring the shed should be cleaned means you are eliminating the infection replacement of the soil is in a very important things in the organized sector the 6 inch top soil is being removed 6 monthly then you will find the difference the, the infection is declined to a significant level and weekly or the 15 days interval you are sprinkling the lime to remove the infection is also works the treatment part you have a different medicines sulfadiamidine amprolium hydrochloride nitroforazan tortrazol they are giving to 1 to 4 days of time sulfadiamidine is a good option but most commonly the amprolium hydrochloride is being used so we are recommending that preventive dose of coccidia stat should be given in the organized farming system preventive coccidia dose means the lower the dose the longer the period of the therapeutic doses you are giving for 4 to 5 days and you are want to use for the preventive coccidia dose you have the dose then increase the period but it also be very clear the when the right time for providing the coccidia stat as a preventive dose generally the animal start gaining infection at a one and a half month of age and initial infection providing the immunity to the kids so the early in infection required to develop immunity so always we should provide the coccidia stat at the age of 2 to 1/2 month of time monensin is a very effective and if and for a antibiotic for a long term control but not recommended because as a principle all the growth promoters are not used in the food animals enterotoxemia is a very important in the growing kids because this is the only disease which is affecting the good animal therefore it is very important to have a consideration in the goat farming the incidence sometimes very high in an unvaccinated goat unvaccinated lambs caused by the e coli the caused by the costin imperfections c and d types lethal toxin especially alpha beta and epsilon iota and enterotoxin are playing important role then epsilon is more important sudden feed change is always related with the enterotoxemia but it is not always a prerequisite 
most of time you'll find there is no sudden change even then you are casing the finding the case of the enterotoxemia mostly it is a per acute to acute disease they are abdominal pain what in coordination neurological sign and death but we there is a chronic form that we never take into consideration the chronic form of et is showing the progressive weight loss intermittent episode of the diarrhea and when you will go for the post mortem of such an animal if it is died you will find the toxins so the toxinotyping is more important for the final identification of the disease these are the photographs there is extensive hemorrhagic enteritis pulpy kidney and sudden death are the clinical marker of the enterotoxemia generally we do not find any time to treat the animal only the intensive fluid therapy or mega doses of the steroid and non steroid can save the life of animal the preferred antibiotics are penicillin tetracycline and the trimethoprim sulfa if there is a outbreak of et most of the animal are comes under the et so some of the animal which are not showing a sign in a risky case we generally recommend the tetracycline bolus that can that can have uh, the antibacterial effect in the intestine but the vaccine is in a very important et vaccine that currently we are using is not very effective in the goat although it is very effective in sheep but is not providing a proper protection in the goat some there are some inherent reason that's why we are working on a new strain we are working on the growth specific vaccine we have identified a new vaccine candidate we have also gone for the genomic sequences now we are starting the vaccine response of this candidate we have also seen the response of the vaccine we also measure the protective titer here you can see the protective titer even after the 12 month of time 12 week of time they are asked declining the 44 animal are now showing the protection it means the titer is declining after 3 month of time although we are recommending the et vaccine to be given at the 6 month of time but when whenever there is a risk there is a number of cases are of acute death are coming you can repeat the vaccine even 3 till to 4 month of time ppr is uh, is in a very uh, i can say everybody knows this disease is in a very fatal disease and they make in all part of country except some of the islands otherwise uh, this is a cosmopolitan type of a disease more severe in goat than sheep and pneumonia diarrhea and buccal lesion are the most clinical marker and easily identifiable the death of the animal because of pneumonia when we are targeting the treatment of the ppr we should consider the treatment of pneumonia we use the broad spectrum antibiotics anti inflammatory and other the bronchodilators to save the life of animal but only protection by the vaccination vaccine is a very perfect vaccine it is a, a vaccine which is given once in 3 years a, a lifetime vaccine to protect the animal foot and mouth disease is not a uh, sometimes is taken as a very light disease but now we are changing the face of a disease some of the outbreak are uh, also occurring in the goats with a such a acute sign is occurring in the cattle but generally in most of the cases they are on the lameness one or two lesion on the buccal cavity and one or two lesion in the this uh, vesicle in the foot the vesicle in goat are very fragile in comparison to cattle you will find number of the vesicle in the foot of the cattle but you will find a rare vesicle in the foot of a goat because of high fragility but the it is very dangerous when the goat is not being vaccinated and the born kids if it is suffer from fmdi there is a heavy economic losses the goat pox is again is a very dreadful disease it is mostly being observed in the west bengal bihar maharashtra odisha andhra pradesh and rajasthan and mostly the two important breeds like black bengal and ganjam they are most suffer with the goat pox highly high morbidity and high mortality it occurs in the two form this is the one very severe and systemic form where the pox lesions are very clear all over the body when you conduct the post mortem also you will find the same pox lesion in all vital organs but the different type of the pox is also being observed where you will did not find much more systemic sign of pneumonia but you will find the the this stone like lesions when you will put a 
and over the surface you will find the nodules this is sometimes termed as the, the stone box if you treat the animal it survives but in this systemic form it is very difficult animal having high mortality so again uh, the better option for the annual vaccination which is available uh, the vaccine in india the uh, paratuberculosis a uh, jaundice disease again this disease is not very common in the extensive system of the management but as you are going for intensive management you will find number of the cases of paratuberculosis and this causative bacteria is microbacteria avm subspecies tuberculosis and when the adult animal it's is also losing the weight skin become tough elastic leathery and then the skin height bound condition then you can 100% predict it might be a paratuberculosis also called as jones disease but there is only difference in the clinical manifestation with the cattle in cattle there is a, always there is intermittent diarrhea but in goat you will not find a very consistent sign of diarrhea you will find the chronic emaciation and leading to a mortality for the diagnosis we also develop a specific elisa kits we are also selling these kits and we also work on et in our institute uh, for the last 10 years and we find we also work on the vaccine jd vaccine it is being commercialized and being marketed by the biovet bangalore and if there is a organized farm and you are find the number of cases of jd you can advise the vaccination against paratuberculosis abortion in goat is also is a very uh, concern in the goat farm a lot of farmers are complaining the abortion when we survey the except what are the common etiology of the abortion the most important as brucella melitensis and the chlamydophila besides this we also isolates this is salmonella and the coccidella other infection but mostly it is dominated by the brucella melitensis and the chlamydophila brucella melitensis is really a, a very important organism because of the highly zoonotic diseases test and slaughter policy is most commonly adopted and in this in the protocol of slaughtering of animal testing and slaughtering of animal we develop a protocol we develop a three type of the test one is the serum agglutination it is a common uh, available in a specific elisa against the brucella melitensis that is a brooch acts a dot elisa kits means it is a dot elisa kits you have to use uh, the serum and some chem some the chemicals and after that you will develop a color spots that giving the positive reaction we also develop a tagment probe pcr that can be performed the body fluids means you collect the vaginal fluids stomach content and you can easily detect this but the treatment there is no option if there is a number of cases are uh, coming on the abortion then you recommend the tetracycline long acting or endofloxacin for one to two three the time it can have some value then check the storm of the abortion otherwise of no value vaccination generally uh, the no vaccine is available but now in india the raven vaccine is now available it is recommended for goat but we, sh we should be very careful when you are using the raven vaccine raven vaccine is very good for goat and this uh, this is a live vaccine that the bacteria may comes in the milk also if the you are not using the milk after the proper proper the heating then this strain is very pathogenic to human beings so always advise when you are vaccinating with the raven vaccine to the farmers go for boiling of the milk so you can have uh, you do not have the infection of raven strain this is a disease which is not in our country it is a disease which is under vigilance in our country caprine arthritis and tuberculosis is a viral disease there is no clinical evidence we are uh, surveying the disease in different part of country collecting the serum samples and the morbid samples still there is no clinical evidence although there is serological evidence because of the cross matching uh, the disease is manifested in the both adult animal and the kid kid will suffer from the meningitis encephalitis and the adult animal suffer from the arthritis and mastitis so these are the photographs of the cae although this disease is exotic still but under vigilance so this is our duty to have the um, if there is a such a clinical condition we can inform to the other institution we can also have prediction it might be a ca the parasitic infestation is a small ruminant 
is also one of the headache especially in the the organized or even in the extensive system of the management under the bursitis perm infection there is also not term as the gastrointestinal nematodiasis hemonchus contortus it is a infection found in the abomasum contortus is sucking the blood resulting to a anemia besides this there are other other parasites of the bursitis type is also infecting the cheek and mouth but the hemonchus is really a headache because it is having a direct life cycle that the animals so the goats are going to the pasture or the grazing in the winter season especially the lot of uh, l3 larvae are available consume directly they are causing the infection there are the number of uh, the treatment approaches number of uh, the enthalmatics are available they are used at the defined dose rate and they are very effective also but for the control you need a strategy in prevention we have two approaches one approach that commonly adopted the drenching mass drenching all animal at a defined period when there is a risk of the high level of infection especially in the rainy season we generally recommend that we should deworm the animal before the monsoon season and after the monsoon season and there are the another concept live with the parasites means some of the parasites should be in the animal because as long as the parasite is in the in the body they having the immunity means they produce the immunity so this is known as the targeted therapy in this case where we are deworming the animal as such there are also one of the approach to maintain the refugia population why because when you are deworming the animal continuously for two three times in year there is a possibility of the resistance so how to avoid the resistance in this approach what we did we keep the animal without treatment means we select the animal which is showing the lesser clinical sign or the lesser load of the uh, this hemonchus contortus to maintain the susceptible stock otherwise when you are eliminating or you are having the resistance strain it become a headache at one point of time in second approach this is being called as a farmacia approach means in hemonchus infection the load of the infection has a direct correlation with the anemia means higher the load higher the anemia so with this concept you can see this is the mucus membrane and you see the anemia so the load of the infection has a direct correlation so it is not necessary that you will treat all the cases you have to treat the animal where they are having a uh, high load of infection especially the load is like 2000 uh, egg product pestilences in parempistomiasis uh, is in as a, another infection which is very common in goat and this is the photographs uh, where you can also understand there is stagnant water where the metasarcaria is enormous in number when this being consumed by the sheep and goats they cause they are suffer from the pestilences in the parempistomiasis in parempistomiasis sometimes this is horrible because animal suffer from the acute diarrhea and acute mortality they need a specific treatment with the specified enthalmatics oxaclozenide trifoxanide triclopidogrel there is one of the one also disease that need the, the concentration of the veterinarians or the scientists the pollen cephalomalacia the nervous symptoms the bizarre nervous system is also giving the suspicion of the number of diseases like listeriosis some other in meningitis and encephalitis Polysopalacia is one of them. It most of time is being skipped in the diagnosis. Or one uh, also one of the diseases like cirrhosis that is also also having a similar sign. So in this situation where there is a no uh, region of uh, the high temperature or you are not predicting the infectious meningitis and cephalitis, you also suspect the polysopalacia. The reason is not very clear. but there is some rheumatoid dysfunction where the thymidine enzyme is reducing the thymine production and there is a neurological sign in this case if you are injecting the thymine high dose of thymine the animal immediately you will find a recovery is magic treatment so in the case of the neurological sign you also consider the polysomalacia is one of them in some of the places this disease is very high incidence i have so in the um, in the bikaner veterinary college the second or three, third case of uh, goat is coming and they are responding to the thymine definitely there might be a polysophomalacia 
hemoprotozoan infection they are not very common triplosomiasis babesiosis atherosclerosis in comparison to the cattle and buffalo they are not very commonist but now we are also finding the cases of hemoprotozoan infection filariasis we have seen a very live case in goat where there is a lot of uh, the enlargement of the lymph nodes as case of cattle and the babesiosis is also they are red urine and they are responding to the corresponding treatment by using the barren so these infections are now also becoming more and more and more prone to these animals otherwise in before 10 years the disease were very rarest in the goat but now goat is also becoming sensitive and susceptible to the hemoprotozoan infection now what we are adopting at our cirg and recommending to the other part other acroclimatic condition to how to prevent the infection in the young animal in adult animals this is our standardized annual health calendar that is being used and disseminated to the goat farmers ppr is uh, all the vaccination we start at the 3 month of age not before 3 month of age in ppr we are not giving any booster injection and this confer the immunity for 3 years but when there very common question being asked by the veterinarian that what should be the practice for the vaccination in field condition as you know in the goat farming the the slaughtering age is 6 to 9 month or up to 12 month of time so there is a population is continuously going out for the slaughtering or for the sale so the every year you will having susceptible animal so we are recommending that in the case of the extensive system or the village or the condition you can go for the annual vaccination so most of uh, the animals are in the susceptible age group in enterotoxemia which is not a very good vaccine for a goat again this vaccine 3 to 4 month of age again one booster dose after 3 week 4 uh, week later and 6 month interval if you are uh, observing the more case of ut you can still go for earlier it means that 3 to 4 month, month interval foot and mouth disease 3 to 4 month age then again repeat infection 6 month uh, interval goat pox similar as to fmd hs if there is a more case of pneumonia you can also advocate the hs vaccine in goat in deworming schedule coccidiosis it is a disease age related disease this age group is more vulnerable for any coccidiosis instead you can select either the amprolium or sulfonamidine recommended for the weak period of time endoparasitic It should not be very early. Sometimes, sometimes the farmers start giving the enthalment in three months before, so it is not advisable. If it is uh, four month to five month of age, you give the first treatment of enthalment. Uh, generally, recommending the pre and post monsoon lysentic infestation. Whenever there is a high load, you can recommend the treatment. We are recommending that the animals should be screened at least once in a year for brucellosis, Jones disease, and mycoplasma. it the mycoplasma you can have a specific treatment for brucellosis you have a testing uh, slaughter policy and jones disease there is always there is a culling policy if there is a high discharge of the bacteria and showing the clinical sign for the farmers we also developed some mobile app for the goat production they are the available on the uh, play store bakri mitr bakri palan this is a, it is a, can be accessed in the four language english tamil kannada goat products is one of the important commodities having some preliminary information on the goat products and the mobile application so this is a, one a, a book on goat production that can also be useful uh, for the the professionals uh, to gain the more uh, information on the goat, goat production so i last uh, the thanks to the all viewers and this is the flock of ganjam breed of goat uh, that is a very important breed of uh, that odisha and uh, you can see a very elite farm so thank you very much uh, for your patience hearing now it is uh, open for discussion hello
so if, if there is any uh, question or uh, suggestion on the presentation although there are certain more diseases but because that is such a time constraint i was touching on the important diseases which is very commonly encountered by the farmers or the practicing veterinarian Uh, uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, presentation. There is one question uh, from uh, one of your participants. Uh, uh, do you advocate steroid in severe respiratory distress in PPR? Actually, uh, as a principle in viral diseases, you should avoid these steroids. You should go for non-steroidal preparation. But whenever there is a acute pneumonia, you can use the steroid also. There is no hitch in that. You have to save the life of an animal. They are very sometimes very useful also. Right. Uh, one other question is that, sir, with which pathogen does CA virus show cross reactivity among goats in India? Mm, I cannot say at this stage, but uh, I have some antigenic similarities, some viruses. Exactly, I cannot uh, say at the time. Uh, because of that, we also surveyed uh, on the CAE, and with the CAE specific uh, test kit, we also find some positivity. Uh, but the clinical case uh, is not uh, is there in the uh, country. One other question, sir. Is oxyclozonide effective against duvinyl parampistone or is rafoxanide better? Rafoxanide is better. Oxyclozonide is very specific for the this adult uh, fasciola. Yes, and uh, another uh, good question is why is of antibiotic in salmonellosis in goats? Salmonellosis, salmonellosis is not a very uh, very important disease in goat, but very definitely is an important uh, causing the diarrhea and other infection in the sea. So the salmonella um, is uh, very effective, and uh, you can use this uh, penicillin uh, or uh, this aminoglycosides is also effective, or uh, this fluoroquinolone and the fluoxacin group is uh, very effective. Uh, how much time will be required for exclusive ET vaccine from CIRG? <laughs> Actually, uh, we have a halfway mark. Last five years, we are working uh, identifying a goat specific uh, Clostridium perfringens, and we have been uh, standardized. We are go for all genome sequencing. Now we are starting the experiments. So definitely, it will take uh, almost three years to develop a vaccine. Yeah. One other question, last question, sir. Uh, is listeriasis important in uh, goats? Oh. And if important, uh, how? Well, listeria is also a very important disease, listeria monocytogen. You will uh, find uh, the number of cases uh, showing the neurological sign, star gauging, animal, and uh, mortality. And listeria not only causing encephalitis, is also causing certain systemic sign in abortion. So, is it important? Important disease. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, hand over to Dr. Mukesh Srivastava for a word of thanks. There is a question is, uh, the incidence of nasal boat. Nasal boat is also there in sheep and goat. So uh, during the sneezing, you will find the number of the boats are coming. So. Is a better approach to use the ivermectin for the treatment of nature. Okay. Dr. Mukesh Srivastava, sir. Dr. Mukesh Srivastava, sir. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Hello. Uh, I was good afternoon to all the uh, participants who are uh, the, in, the, in this seminar. In this webinar, and first of all, I I I want to thank uh, Ashok Kumar sir, Dikane sir, 
our uh, BIPM executive uh, uh, secretaries, vice president sir, and uh, the facility provided by Nilesh Sindhu sir, Dr. Nilesh Sharma, and uh, all the regional secretary and all the participants, students from different universities. So I am thankful to all for the uh, for coming here and uh, for getting benefit from the uh, experience shared by the Ashok Kumar sir. And uh, lastly, I thank to uh, media partner uh, Luas family, uh, especially Dr. Nilesh Chandu, and uh, I think uh, Dr. Nikun Nikhil, uh, Dr. Nikhil and Dr. Nilesh Chandu. Thank you, sir. So I also thanks uh, to the, all the viewers uh, for uh, patience hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. So this concludes today's webinar. We will soon be uh, coming to next webinar, uh, and we will uh, inform it on the uh, Facebook page and uh, our YouTube page. Uh, please uh, remain connected with all of us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks.